So before going to uh, re uh, regional structure, let's discuss about the reversal of the move in and move out. So first start with the reverse of the move out. Okay. Yeah. So we discuss how to do a move out and we saw that due to the move out, there is a time slice get created, which is from the 1st of October to 2nd of October. Right. Now, what we need to do, we need to re-intact it to the 31st um, December 1999. Okay. So that means 31st 12999 should be come here at the move out date. Should... Let's first do the reverse of move out and then we'll proceed with reverse of move in. Okay. So I'm just coming in a reversal manner because that will easier to show you how it work, right? So let's do the reverse of move out. So in the move out screen itself, you can go to the move out option and click on the reverse. Okay, here you can pass the date as uh, 2nd of October was our move out date. So it should be sync with the date which is reflecting there okay otherwise it will not work it will throw the error okay so everything is in sync then we can click enter so so the reversal of move out happened it is saying that it is again re-intacted so reverse move out document for 72 is done save now let's go to the installation so if I'll come again, you can see the move-in happened again. So there is no move-out line items, okay? And you can see the move-out date is now 31, 12, 9, 9, 9, 9, right? So no time slice created. We just re-intact the process and the move-out date is 31, 12, 9, 9, 9, 9, okay? So just... Similar to reverse of move out, we can do a reverse of move in. Okay. So what we need to do, we just need to go to the uh, EC50E. Just I'm going there. And I need to put the date, whatever the date I need uh, applied for the move in. So you, before that, you need to go to the move-in option, click on the reverse of the move-in, pass the date as 1st of October, which I passed for the move-in, pass the business partner, and the installation as well. Okay. So now the reverse of move-in is happen. Save it. So if you'll go, you can see the move out, the move in is not there. So you can see there is no move in. Even if you go to the uh, time slices, build time, you can see there are no sign of move in and move out. So the entire history is moved out, no line item. Clear? Yes. Reverse move in, reverse move out. Okay. So. Till now, whatever we studied, the major stuff is the address, okay? The address are the business partner level, the address are the connection object level. Now, from where this address is coming, okay? So the address is coming from the original structure. So the original structure is a structure allocated in SAP to provide the addresses. You can see in this diagram, the address is provided to the connection object and business partner both. So business partner is getting the address same from the regional structure and connection object also getting from the same regional structure. So we call that as a regional structure. Now this regional structure is again of three types, okay? So these regional structures divided into three parts and these three type regional structure, we call them as postal regional structure. Postal regional structure mostly used for the postal communications. And that is the basic regional structure everybody uses, okay? So like uh, our address is basically a postal 
address. It's not a, a political or a company regional structure. So postal regional structure is mostly for the uh, communication. Whereas political regional structure is there, political region structure is for control, for mostly for the taxation, for the telecom uh, circles, for the utility circles. So there are political regional structures like, uh, like uh, Indian government has their revenue head offices in each zone. So as per the revenue, uh, uh, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, uh, and four districts of Andhra Pradesh come under a East Coast Zone 7 taxation. Okay, so that is the jurisdiction for us. So what is happening here? So the political structure is used for, <clears throat> for the control or for the jurisdiction area to understand. Okay. And the postal structure is for the communication. Okay. So now if you go with the company regional structure, which is mostly developed by the organization. So let it be considered Maruti. Maruti has the biggest reach across India. So it has their own structure. So for Maruti, Kattak, Bhuneshwar, Puri is one district. They are not uh, dividing them into separate district, right? Why? Because based on their organization offices, they divide the whole regional structure, how they can provide the best services. Even if in the utility sector in Odisha, you can observe we have Cisco, Nesco, Wisco. So we have different departments as for the organization, how they can run their services uh, uninterruptedly. Okay. So mostly these three regional structures are there. One is political regional structure, which is mostly for the jurisdiction, for the taxation. We have the company regional structure, which is mostly to provide the services to the customer. And finally, the postal regional structure, which is the address, the communication, and to identify the exact location. Okay. So mostly we use the postal regional structure. Any question on this regional structure types? No, no. So all these regional structure is divided into very similar stuff. It would be linked to a city and that city linked to a city district, that city district linked to a street and that street linked to any of the postal connection or street. So if you can recollect the SAP ISU house, you can recollect there is a road in front of the house. So that is your street. So from the street, we can understand where is the grid. And from the grid, we can understand the connection object and we can provide the services. Okay, so what are the usefulness of this regional structure? Okay, so the utility sector, when I'm discussing, it is not only electricity, it is also related to gas. So what is the nature of a gas? If the temperature increases, the gas volume will increase, right? If the temperature decreases, the gas volume will decrease. decrease. And if the pressure is increases, then? Gas volume. Pressure increase means gas volume decreases. Pressure volume increases means gas volume increases. Right. Okay. So that means if you are at uh, Bhuvaneshwar and you are getting gas from uh, Indian oil, okay, IOL, so Indian oil and you have a gas meter. So the gas meter works based on the volume. So it is called cubic meter. So now that meter will run faster because you are at Bhubaneshwar, the temperature at Bhubaneshwar is mostly 30 to 45 degrees centigrade. Now somebody is in Simla, whose temperature in between 15 to 25 degree. So their gas uh, meter will run slower. Okay, so how to adjust that? So to adjust that, we need a correction factor, volume correction factor. Now to get a volume correction factor, we need temperature and air pressure details. Okay. And this temperature and air pressure details we can get from meteorological department. And that meteorological department linked to the postal regional structure to provide you this temperature and air pressure uh, calendar. Okay. So that's how we use temperature and air pressure in our regional structure. Secondary is water hardness pressure. Now water hardness is very complicated stuff and 
and more, mostly for the particularly for the utilities uh, water utilities it is very complex calculation what is water hardness any idea i think that iron content or something like that yeah uh, yeah so there are not a single iron content there are a lot of uh, minerals which are mm -hmm. creating a water hardness including iron calcium uh, manganese uh, then there we have a concept called uh, uh, ionic okay so how much acidic part is there in water so there is a lot of stuff which create a water hardness and the peculiar thing is the water hardness is differ in every 5 kilometers so if you are near to uh, mahanadi basin your water hardness is different if you are near to the chilika basin your water hardness is different so that's how the water hardness and the pressure of the water also be uh, linked for the water metering now water metering how we calculate again it's based on the volume so for that also we need the detail uh, water hardness details from the department water and utility department to provide the exact bill to the customer so mostly the water is not directly supplied to the customer what we do we get the water from rivers or any bore and we put them into a uh, uh, we call in what is a pani tanki okay in a water tanker and there we check the water hardness based on the water hardness we apply some uh, chemicals not chemicals exactly minerals okay if uh, if uh, calcium is more we need to neutralized by uh, sodium if okay so similarly we uh, neutralize the water we make it healthier we increase the minerals in the water and we make it a healthier drinking level water then we supply that to the uh, consumers okay so that's how we need water hardness details and that is directly linked to your postal regional structure then calorific value so what is calorific value again okay so in our schooling time there was a question so that in 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 hilly areas why people take long time to cook any idea mm, no so to increase that the gas uh, shuttle okay so it is because of the oxygen actually so the oxygen when you go upwards okay uh, thousand feet above so mostly what happened the the percentage of the oxygen get decreases okay now if the percentage of the oxygen get decreases what is the impact the impact is the calorific value you will be decreases okay so like if you are a turi and you burn something you go for a burn fire you observe that your uh, your woods are getting burn very quickly okay but if you are at uh, let's consider you are at uh, kasol uh, there is a hill station in uh, himachal okay kasoli so you are there at kasoli and you are in a burn fire in the night time and you put four five uh, woods it's still burning for a longer period okay so what is the reason behind that the reason is the oxygen level in puri is very high so that's how the calorific is value is high so it is creating lot of temperature and it will make the carbon very quickly whereas at kasoli the calorific value is less it is taking lot of time to burn the wood okay so that's how it differ the the type of uh, calorific values which is converted into joule to calculate the billing for that particular gas so that is also required otherwise it will happen that we are providing the gas at kasoli in a different rate and we are providing a gas at puri in a different rate so to link that calorific value distinct through the postal regional structure okay apart from that are the other stuff like uh, name search terms uh, city district postal code language time zone all other are i believe it is self explanatory any doubt on other points any other points no sir it's fine it's fine okay great so 
So there are three kinds of setting for our uh, regional structure. One is global setting. It is defined by the countries. So global setting means the SAP all automatically provided this. So SAP provided all the country list. You can get your country from there. So that is a global setting. So define countries, define regions. So regions mostly link to the countries and based on the countries, uh, we can define the regions uh, and the time zones as well. Those are also globally defined. So we are in which time zone? So for India, it is called Chennai, Kolkata time zone. So that is our time zone. Uh, so each country has their own time zones. Like in USA, there are six time zones. PST, MST, EST, BST. Okay. So there are a lot of time zones in USA, but in India, we have a single time zone. Uh, so those things are uh, already globally configured. Uh, if you want, you can customize them as well. Okay. Uh, we need not to do any customization. Mostly we go with the defaults. If required, we change the global settings. Okay. Then as we discuss, we need to allocate the temperature area, air pressure, water hardness, calorific value, all those stuff. Uh, so those things are there. Political regional structure. If required, we integrate that, but we mostly integrate with the uh, postal regional structure with the political regional structure, okay? Then company regional structure, again, based on the companies. So finally, if we integrate all this regional structure, you can see the political regional structure and enterprise regional structure, all are integrated to the postal regional structure. So if you have a postal regional structure, you can link them to political regional structure and enterprise regional structure. Now, these regional structures, okay, are actually overlap each other, okay? So when it overlap each other, we bring them to a common point to use all these regional structures, okay? So that's how mostly we, we go with a common line, which is postal regional structure. Okay, any questions till now? No, sir. No, let's move to the next session, which is about scheduling and device technology. Before that, uh, let me show you uh, what is MRU and why we need to create this scheduling. Okay. Okay, so, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me show you some practicals. So till now we created the, uh, the site without devices. Now we'll install a device at the site, right? Let's start with the device creation and installation, and then we'll proceed for the uh, MRU creation, right? To create the device, we have a T code called IQ01. Okay, now the material is already configured. To create the material, the T code is MM01. Now here in this case, we are just using the existing material, a demo device, and the category should be I. I means uh, ISU equipments, okay? So when we create a device, we need to provide the manufacturer. Here the manufacturer is this much. Then we have a construction year, 2022, uh, validation form, 01, 0122, and I'm just putting not necessary for inspection, transfer. So when I create the device, it is always saying it is available. Okay, let me save this. Okay, so the device is 121494. So to display the device, the T code is IQ03. So this is the device. Now you can say it is available. Now we will going to install that device at the site. Okay, so our installation is 280. Now, to install a device, we need a device location. Okay, to create a device location, the T code each is 65. Okay, just press enter. Now here I need to give the connection object. So 
So I need to find the connection object. The connection object is 569. Okay. So I need to pass here 569 and a description. Device, device location for the okay for the new installation. Save. Now your device location is created, okay? So your device location number is 570. Now we created the device, we created the device location. What we need to do, we need to install. So installation is again divided into two parts, billing relevant installation and technical installation, okay? Hmm. But there is another one is called full installation. So EG33. When I tell EG33, it is called technical installation. Technical installation means the device we can install, but it will not reflect uh, at your uh, installation. Okay, so our installation. Hello. Okay. Let me go to ES32. So, sir, hello. Yeah. So sir, uh, we need to create a device and device location. We need not to create register group and all those things. Yeah, those are required. Those are required to create the device. Okay, so today I'm just giving you a brief about how to install the device. Okay, okay. Okay, so now then we'll go each one by one. So device creation, uh, like material creation, device creation, register creation, that would be one session. Okay. Okay, so you can see there is no device at the site. Okay, now I need to install that device, technical installation. Our device location is 570. Activity date would be 1st of October. I don't know what is the installation date. 1st of October, okay. 2022. So device number, so what is the device number here? Okay, so your device is now at the site. I need to put the meter reading here, put meter reading at zero, period connection would be, uh, okay, period connection is zero, number of days is 30. Just save this. Now your device is installed at the site, but how you will know that? Because if you go to the installation and click, you will not able to see the device here, okay? So you need to go to the device site. So here it is showing available, go back and again come, you can see it is now installed, INST, right? That means the device is installed. Where exactly it is installed, you can see that as well. Go to the master data. So in the master data, you can see in the below, you have connection object, you have device locations. Okay, so at this device location 570, which is part of connection object 569, your device is installed. Now that is called uh, technical installation. Now we need to do a billing relevant installation. So what is the T code? Again, go to slash n e g 34 so billing relevant installation t code 01 so key date i am giving 01102022 and device so probably our device number is 121494 Okay, and installation. What is our installation? 280, right? Yeah. So put the installation as 280. 
enter now you can see it is asking something more it is asking about rate type so we need to apply a rate type which is already there e l e n s t okay and fact group so here the fact group is 0001 okay mm -hmm. now save this two type of uh, two parts in a installation one is technical installation and other one is billing relevant installation eg33 and eg34 so you can see the device is there right everything is reflecting right now mm -hmm. so this is your uh, installation if if you want to do a full installation you can go with eg31 yeah. Okay, EG31 is for full installation. Okay. Now, once the device is installed, now we are going to do a move in. So, after installing the device, what is the real impact on move in that we need to understand? Okay. So, the T code for move in is C50. E. So zero one one zero BP each nine zero zero four six six installation each two eighty. Okay. Okay. So when your device is at the site, you can see here, you can see you getting all the details of the device, right? Yeah. Okay, and you need to give a initial meter reading here. Okay, then press save. Okay, this is the welcome letter. Yes, and your moving is done. Now, if you'll see at your installation, you can see all the details are there with device. So click on the device, you can get all the device details. Similarly, if you go to the data environment, you can find your device location and device at the site. So you can see the device is there and a device location and device is there. Okay, with your master data. Any questions right now? Okay, now you can observe here, there are two stuff, one is the device directly linked to the installation as well and the device is directly linked to the uh, device location now i missed that part when i did a technical installation it is only linked to the device location when i did a billing relevant installation that is linked to the uh, utility installation okay so technical installation and billing relevant installation both are there okay now i need to remove the devices what is the T code for that? Okay, we'll do that uh, lately. So I'm trying to explain what we are exactly doing. So we install the device. Now we need to create a meter reading order for the device. Okay, so to create a meter reading order, our T code is slash n E L zero one. So it is order creation okay slash n e l zero one so when you create the order you need to provide a mru for that and you need to create a schedule for that right so uh, i installed the device on first of october so here so first of november i pick for the meter reading order creation so if i'll click on the order Meter reading order already exists with the same. Okay. So let me see, is the meter reading order already exist? Create, so bill order. So you can see there is a order already exist for 1st of November, 2022. Okay. Now, now the point is how this order created, how the scheduling is picked, how the meter reading unit is used. Okay, so where is our meter reading unit? So our meter reading unit is here, MRU. 
Okay. So MRU linked to a scheduling. So these are your scheduling and that MRU cannot uh, uh, create without a portion. So portion need to be created first and then we can create the MRU. Okay, but portion cannot be created without parameter records. So we need to create a parameter record. On top of that, we need to create the portion. On top of that, we need to create the MRU and then we can schedule the MRU with dates. Yeah. Okay, great. So you got that. So now the definition, what is the definition of MRU? As you mentioned, MRU is a meter reading unit. So what is a meter reading unit? As I mentioned from the regional structure, we define different houses. Each house has their own addresses. And what we did, we link multiple addresses into a unit. So let it be 100 houses in a single unit. We call a MRU for that. That means if we go with literal manner, that means the number of customers or the number of installation we can build at one go, not bill, uh, we can take meter reading at one go, that is called a MRU. Okay, so the number of customers whom we can get the meter reading in one go or within a one unit that we call a MRU. Okay, so what is a portion then? The portion is a bit different. So the number of customers we can bill in, in once, that is called a portion. So the number of customers we can do bill once, that is a portion. So portion basically, let it be there one lakh of customers. We take one portion, one portion is of 10,000 and that people can be billed once, means in one go, they all will be billed. So that is called a portion. Whereas MRU, out of those 10,000 customers, when our meter reader going to the field, they are taking the meter reading of 1,000 customers in one go, okay? So in that case, we call them a MRU. So in one unit, there are 1,000 customers from whom we are getting meter reading. But at one portion, we are able to do generate the bills for 10,000 customers. So that is a portion. Getting? Okay. So if we go with the structural form, so you can see the meter readings, when we are taking, we are taking on MRU. So MRU is res responsible to create the MRO, meter reading order. Once the meter reading order is created, then we can take the meter reading. Now, it's a very uh, peculiar thing. Once the meter reading order created, then only we are able to create uh, take the meter reading. That means, we are blocking a period for meter reading. Let it be from 1st of October to uh, 30th of October, 31st of October, that is a period. Okay, so that period need to be blocked. And for that period, we can take the meter reading. So that is called meter reading order. Okay, so to blocking that period for uh, uh, meter reading and for billing, we call that scheduling. When we creating the MRO meter reading order, what we are doing, we are we are actually blocking a period, a period from let it be first of October to thirty first of October. We are blocking that period to generate the orders, right?